it's Jen, Felicity Stitches. I'm back and I am ready to get caught up. And so what I'd like to do is a series of videos where we can get caught back up and reacquainted and hopefully not take up too much of your time. One of the things that I discovered on my five month hiatus is that I was so pressed for time and I was so stressed out and I was so anxious that I couldn't allow myself really long breaks of floss tube and things like that because I would end up watching for two hours somebody's episode and it would be really hard to go back to what I needed to do um, or life just in general. So I always found time to watch Yvonne Night Owl Stitcher and I could always find time to get in 15-20 minutes with Priscilla and Chelsea because it was short and it was quick to the point and I loved that and I am a lover of long floss tube videos like many of you but I really thought maybe I needed to find a more balanced approach so I'm gonna shoot for around 30 to 40 minutes max for my videos and hopefully that will be long enough for those of you who like really long videos and short enough for those of you who prefer short videos for both of you to watch. So I just want to get caught up with life stuff. First of all, I'm done with school. I finished at the end of November, right before Thanksgiving, and then we had our pinning ceremony in December, and I had been studying for boards well, you know, for a whole year, basically, but I was also in clinicals at that time, so it was really difficult to dedicate solely just to studying for boards. So as soon as clinicals were over at the end of November, I started studying for boards, and I was able to take my boards at the end of December and pass on the first try, which was fantastic, and I was thrilled, and I'm thrilled to be done. We had a graduation ceremony, uh, for the students in my cohort. It was lovely, it was fancy. I shared some pictures on Instagram if you want to check that out at Felicity Stitches. And I've just been trying to learn what the new normal is, which I'm not exactly sure yet. And I'm still actually shocked, but I'm still dealing with some anxiety and I'm not exercising heavily, so that's not it. And so I just need to sort of regroup and figure out what's happening with me. And I, I don't know if it's just aftershocks, if you will, sort of just trying to get used to it. Now all of a sudden everything is stopped, so I'm withdrawing from all of that stress and anxiety and that sort of thing. So I'm just trying to find calm. I've been doing a lot of cleaning, a lot of purging. A lot of organizing and quite a bit of stitching so that's been wonderful and a lot of planning so this video is going to be sharing with you my FFOs and my uh, other finishes and then my whips and then that'll just be it and then I'll share with you gifts and haul and plans and some things about me in other videos after this one and I'd like to sort of do them fairly quickly one after another so that we can get all caught up if that sounds good to you. Uh, my daughter started kindergarten this fall which was wonderful. She's growing so fast and learning so much. I'm just I'm in awe of her and how quickly she catches on to things and how easy some things are for her. She's learning Mandarin She's learning Spanish, she's learning, you know, numbers and counting and telling time and all the great things that you learn. And she's making good friends and her kindergarten teacher's wonderful. It's just been a really good experience. I'm really looking forward to 2018. My husband is also planning a career change. He's going to be going away to school for just a short while. It's very intensive, uh, the program that he's going to, and then... Um, he'll be on his way to his new career so really excited for everyone in our family and what this new year is going to hold for us fully finished objects so I've shown a lot of you these but I just thought this is a quick way to get sort of reintroduced so my very first 
fully finished object was a gift that I had stitched for my uh, mother-in-law. And she has taken us in and created this lovely space for um, for me to live, my husband and I and our family, and it's been really great. So I wanted to sort of show her my gratitude. Um, so I stitched this piece here, and this is from Just Cross Stitch Magazine, uh, I think the Christmas Ornament Edition for 2015. And I'm going to bring it in here. My husband set up this high definition camera. It's, uh, it's pretty great and it has an amazing zoom on it but I found that when I did some practice runs filming when I would zoom in too far and then try to move the piece around that you just basically got like seasick. So this was uh, the very first time I had ever stitched on linen and I am going to zoom in a little bit just so you can get an idea of how my stitches look and I think it turned out pretty well and it was scary but it was fine and then this this mat um, this mat is came with the frame and I had to cut it a little bit but it has linen fabric on it and the I didn't like the color. It was more brown than this sort of, or not brown, but uh, it was like a cream colored and I didn't think it w went well with the white flowers. So I painted it a sort of a bronze metallic and um, I think it turned out really well. So that was my very first attempt. You can see like the cuts are all wonky on it and it's actually sitting in there kind of funny. but. It was the very first time I'd ever tried anything like that, and I kind of love how imperfect it is. So that was the very first finish that I'd ever done, and I gave that to uh, my mother-in-law for Christmas. And then I had intended to give this to my husband uh, for Christmas, or his birthday, whoop, sorry, or his birthday, but I didn't finish it in time. I actually finished it after the new year. His birthday is the day after Christmas. This is a freebie ink circles pattern. I believe it's a it's well it's a Celtic knot but I believe it's from the month of September so if you go to her website and you look for if you want to find this one search for something that has September in the word and my daughter picked out the thread. We went to the LNS and picked out the fabric together. My daughter picked out the thread. It's a Karen uh, water lilies or watercolors and it's called Nefertiti and that's a super hot pink and I just really love how it turned out it was a bugger I kept miscounting and oh I just I had several times where I thought I was gonna give up on it but I didn't and I'm very very pleased with how it turned out I think if I were to ever do something like this again, I might grid. I don't know how to grid, but I think I would work very hard to figure it out. Okay, so the next finish, this was for my mother-in-law for Mother's Day. Um, she's just been so good to us, and I just really wanted to say thank you to her. So this is uh, letters from the la -di da uh, letter series and it's gorgeous and they just have all kinds of monograms and they have these fun little um, things that you can put in there and I am going to zoom on this because you really have a hard time seeing the variegation but it's definitely there this is sorry about the glare this is um, Uniform Blue is the name of this color. And I just don't know how to get rid of glare. That's a terrible thing. I don't know. So that's it.
just so you can see how good this zoom is. So pretty, right? And that's 2 over 2 on 36 count, which I think is Emily's preferred. I think that's Emily C. Is that the is that your favorite? Is that your sweet spot? Is 2 over 2 on 36? I thought it was. And I really liked how it turned out. The ladies at the shop had said that I probably should have used one strand because it looked too puffy, but I kind of liked how puffy it looked. Um, really good coverage. Now, this guy is the most recent finish. Well, I should wait for that. Let's do this one next. This is, this is, I was literally in the middle of Halloween and everybody was doing, you know, Halloween themed stitching, dark October stitching, pumpkin stitching, and I, I just, it broke my heart that I couldn't stitch with you guys. So I found, I watched one of Yvonne's videos and she had shown a small that she had made a long time ago. This is a freebie from La Comtesse. And there's actually more to it, but I just stitched the words. I think she had only stitched the words as well. And this is with a DMC. I think it's 921. And I stitched that on 2 over 2 on Mushroom Lugana uh, that I coffee dyed myself. So I had watched... I had watched Priscilla and Chelsea do their tutorial of how they do Vana's bake and basted method and I was up here in the tower and I got to be in my bonnet about it and I had some instant coffee and so I used some hot water from my tea kettle right there and some instant coffee I even sprinkled some some instant coffee I don't know if you can I don't know if you can see it on there but I had even sprinkled some so that I would I got this sort of fleckled Fleckled, is that a word? Fleckled look, where the coffee just sort of dissolved into the fabric, and I thought it looked really cool. So I'm going to make that into a little pillow uh, for my non-existent double that I don't have yet. Uh, so that's a goal. And, oh, you guys, this thing is done. It's really and truly and honestly done. I had posted it as a finish before and it turns out that I had stitched the date, the birth date wrong and what happened was I actually put the due date instead of the birth date because I had the due date stuck in my head for nine months and so I was like, oh wow, she was born on the 11th. And when I took it out, I ripped a piece of the, the linen thread, so I did my very best to cover that up, and I think I did a pretty good job. I don't think that you can tell. I'm going to zoom in so that you can see this is Vintage Lentil by Lakeside Linens, which I am, I'm a Lakeside girl right now, people. I love it and it's 36 count. I stitched one over two on 36 count and I just really want to give you an idea of the kind of coverage that you get. Granted this is dark thread over light fabric but it's really not too bad, right? I don't, I mean it's not, it's not perfect though which what is but can you see that oh, gosh is that amazing or what um so it really has a good vintage feeling to it because of that and i that's really what i was going for but i wasn't a hundred percent thrilled with the coverage for other things that i would stitch so i have tried something new and I will share that with you in a little while. But that's a finish, I just have to get it framed up and ready to go. 
And then I did the Christmas pickle. This is a Mill Hill kit. And don't look at me, look at the pickle. There we go. Mill Hill kit, super cute, super easy to stitch. There were three different colors of beads. This sort of light opalescent green, the dark green, and then the gold. And then they have this little star treasure that you, you hook on with a dark green bead. They really kill you. There must be like six different colors of greens in there. And they really sort of, they really kind of kill you with that because they refer, it, you know, it's like light green, very light green, dark green, medium green, very dark green, very super dark green, the darkest of greens. And you're like, really people, could we not have come up with another way to do this? I don't know. But I made it through. I learned my lesson because I had bought a kit that was like that, that had like different purples. And I actually, the difference between them was almost imperceptible. And I made the mistake of stitching with the wrong one. And then I was stuck with it. So, done. And then my final finish, most recent finish, is the Jeanette Douglas Quaker Sampler that I stitched for my daughter on that horrendous 28 count Irish linen that you get at the box stores like Joann's and Michael's and Hobby Lobby and it's miserable. It's the most miserable miserable piece of fabric I've ever stitched on and if I had any left I would burn it. I hate it so much. The weave is super super wide like the holes in between I'm gonna zoom so that you can see um, but just disgusted I Mackenzie or not Mackenzie McKenna this I McKenna this this is a frame that I found it's an odd shape it's 10 by 12 I found it at the last place that I went a place around here called old time pottery and I put it together did all of the stuff with the sticky board and everything you can see the back on Instagram. I still have to fix all this stuff, but I might not even. Who knows? And then here's my new phrase, my girlfriends and I, my stitching friends. We say that stitching is our path to immortality because it lasts. Like those schoolgirl samplers we're all stitching. It lasts. And someday, 400 years from now, the Nicola Parkman of 24... 18 is going to say, look what I found. I'm going to reproduce this. Isn't it fabulous? And so it's my path to immortality. So I'm going to zoom in here. There's a combination of satin stitches. These are satin stitches. These are satin stitched here. These are one over one nightmare on this fabric. And everything else is two over two. And I use this piece to teach myself Vana's method of stitching, fifering, if you will. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit so that you can see, let's see, have you see sort of what the alphabet and the, there, that's good. So this was my version of thread blending. I had almost run out of uh, this thread here, it's Concord Weeks Dye Works, and I had used it in the baby sampler. And what I decided to do was punch up things on the this sampler by using it outside the border and for this satin stitch, and I almost ran out, so I blended it with some DMC, and I think it turned out really well. If you'll remember, that blue satin stitch border is what almost did me in. You can see my one over one stitching there on that little green Quaker. I mean, there's lots of stuff going on here. I'm going to show you my signature because I'm happy with that. I love how my little 2018 turned out. And I think the 2 over 2 was not too bad, but you can see Vonna's Method gives you beautifully laying stitches every time. Zooming out here. 
so that's it. That's the finished piece. And I was so ready for it to be done that I had to finish it. And Mackenzie was... McKenna. Jeez Louise. McKenna was on call for me. So I was able to get the sticky board. It was very easy to reposition. I had to reposition it like three times. But it worked out just fine. And that's it. My daughter has it hanging up in her room. She loves it. Okay. Where are we at here? Time-wise. Okay. So that's all my finishes. Now we're going to go through whips. And the first whip I'm going to show you, there's nothing changed on it. It's my drawn thread piece that I am doing with my girl Mackenzie. That's what I'm having problems with is because I'm thinking about Mackenzie right now and I was trying to talk about McKenna. Uh, my girl Mackenzie and I are doing this piece and it's not done but it will be. And I just think it's beautiful. I love that white work. I chose a raw linen to work on it and it's because I really wanted that white work to stand out and I think that it does and I have something behind it so that might be why you can't see through my little eyelets you look up real close I mean look at how pretty those flowers are so there's like a, a bunch of I'm gonna turn it here there's a bunch of different kinds of stitches there's lazy daisies and there's some smyrnas and some eyelets and I just love it I think it's I think it's lovely and if I'm telling the truth, I must have had like eight or nine different drawn thread garden type patterns in my wish list on one, two, three stitch. But I've gotten to the point right now where there are so many things that I want to stitch that I'm almost having anxiety about the fact that I might not be able to stitch everything and I want to start everything right now. I think it's because I was watching everybody for, what, three years now? 2015 is when I came to, came back to cross-stitching. I started when I was like eight and I had stitched on and off until I was in my mid-late 20s and then I sort of got away from it and then you know 20 years later I find it again and it's amazing and it's incredible and I'm in school so I'm constrained by a budget of time and a financial budget and so I just can't stitch all the things and I can't buy all the things and I've been watching all of you and that's sort of a fix but not quite enough of a fix for me so I've been watching all of your videos trying to get caught up and everybody's talking about how they're going to be really good this year and they're going to stitch from stash and I'm here to tell you that I'm going to be the naughtiest stitcher you have ever met this year. I am not stitching from stash. I mean I'm going to stitch some things from stash but I'm going to buy all the things and I'm going to start all the things and I'm going to stitch all the things and it's going to be just a joyous, joyous frenzy of thread and fabric and patterns and I just can't wait. So those of you who are restraining yourselves, you can come to me and I will be your proxy. I will, you can live vicariously through me as I have lived vicariously through you for the last three years. This is my Hardanger piece. And it's beautiful. And it, it went along pretty quickly. And now we're at the point to cut and I just can't bring myself to do it. So Deborah Fassler, uh, AZ Needleworker, gave me the wonderful advice to 
stitch these cloister block squares on some other hard hanger and practice my cutting. And if I did that, then I would surely get to the point where I felt comfortable with cutting and could do it without any problems. It's a really pretty piece. And this is using DMC Pearl Cottons. I would like to get better at using variegated um, or anticipating how to use them. I don't know if you can see right here. I have like a, a whoopsie daisy. There's just like this blue right in the middle of it. And it's not ideal, but I'm not changing it because I don't know if I could fix it and I don't want to ruin it because that blanket stitch was not easy for me. I don't know if you remember me talking about it, but it was not easy. So what else do I have? Um, I have my Chatelaine, my Micro Mini, and I have done a little bit more on it. Uh, what I've really, this one is on a gray fabric that I hand dyed myself. Just a, just a Monaco, 28 count Monaco, and that center piece is one over one, and can you see outlined right around the black is this gold, antique gold petite treasure braid, and I really feel like it makes it sparkle so much. I don't know if it's showing up there or not, but uh, so all I've done... Ooh, sorry, all I've done is this circle around and then these squares here. Um, they each get little flowers inside them and that kind of thing. But this was my first petite, petite treasure braid. And it wasn't, it wasn't difficult to stitch with. It's just one strand and it was okay. I don't have any complaints about the petite treasure braid. I've never stitched with petite treasure braid or... Krynik? 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 I want to say Krynik. Krynik? I don't know. Krynik. Krynik? Krynik. I don't know. Krynik. So yeah, there's that one. And I'm enjoying it, but I feel like because it's a Chatelaine that I have to be, you know, mentally on to stitch that one. And then here is oh, hang on, put this back. <laughs> Whoop, zippers. I'm using these uh, as project bags. These are the bags that Nicole's Needlework uses. And sometimes they're black on top or this really pretty sort of light aqua sea blue. And I love them because they're clear and they're all uniform in size, they're all uniform in color. Um, I just won a project bag from my sweetheart, Michelle, who, uh, farm girl, who lives in Minnesota, and I'm so excited because I've never won anything stitching related before, and it's a beautiful bag, and I'm super psyched to try it out because I'm afraid I'm going to fall in love and then I might have to make a bunch of those. And I don't know that I have time to do that because I have to stitch all of these other things. <laughs> okay. So right now I'm using these. I have like 10 or 12 ready for the projects that I've kitted up that I'm going to start. And again, that's another video. And then um, they come in different sizes. So this is like my standard size. It fits really well in my thing. But then I have a couple of really big ones because it fits an 11 inch Q-snap with no problem. So this is a recent start, recent, I mean, it was last year, but it's a start that I started and then I haven't done anything with it since. And that is because uh, I was in the middle of school and I was just desperate to start something new. I was desperate to do something different and have um, have something new to love. So what I'm doing is pulling out all my threads so that I can rake through them so that you can see how beautiful they are like Nicole does on 
her channel because she's always like she pets her threads and they're I was like oh yes those are beautiful and so if I don't do that you won't be able to see how pretty these are and the color palette for this design is really 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 special and um, it's the main reason why I chose it so I am stitching on a 46 count Lakeside Linen Light Exemplar. Yes, you heard that correctly. I said 46 count because if 36 count, 1 over 36 is good, then 1 over 40 is probably good, but let's try 1 over 46 because this sucker is huge and I didn't want it to be that big. So this was my perfect opportunity to try something a little bit smaller. So this is a newer design from Rosewood Manor and it is called Parchment Tapestry. I'm still pulling my threads out, you guys. Parchment Tapestry, and I thought it was gorgeous. It was one of those, like, Smith Sampler when I looked at it, when I saw that Nicole was doing it. I, I mean, I knew right away. It's It literally jumped out of the television set and spoke to me and said, you know you have to stitch me. You know I was I was designed for you, with you in mind. So you have to stitch me. So here's the... I'll get up nice and close for you. Here's the sampler. I'm sorry, but that's gorgeous. And look at that super cute alphabet on the bottom. And I know what you're going to say. You're going to say... But Jen, you went into that whole little diatribe about how you don't need to stitch alphabets and one alphabet is enough and how many alphabets can one person stitch? And I'm here to tell you that I stitched that alphabet on that Jeanette Douglas sampler and I discovered I really enjoy stitching alphabets and there's lots of different alphabets out there. So I'm gonna stitch all the alphabets. I'm not, I'm not ashamed or afraid to say that I was mistaken. And then I have a pre I had a preconceived notion that has since been changed. So here is here's the threads. Oh, I missed some. Hang on, let me pull these out. These are all weeks, and I, somebody had posted about how they had issues with weeks not being the full five yards that they said they were gonna be, so. I'm definitely going to check. Look at how gorgeous that color palette is. Shut up, right? So pretty. So yeah, that's the color palette. And then here's my start. I know, it's really impressive, isn't it? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in so that you can see the difference. I showed you what 1 over 2 on 36 count looks like. Now you can see the difference for 1 over 2 on 46 count. And I even brought a I have a quarter here so that you can sort of get some scale. So here's my quarter. one over two on 46 count and yes I have like maximal lighting and maximal magnification happening when I stitch this and I am loving it I am loving every single stitch I love how it looks I love the coverage I love how dainty it is look at that next to that quarter those are some tiny stitches, people. Tiny, tiny. Okay. I'm going to zoom out now. My husband, with this camera, is so sweet, but it's tricky because it's right here. Like, I have to lean forward, and I don't have a remote control. First world problems. So, yes. So that is something I'm going to be working on a lot in the near future. And again, here's my threads. Pretty, pretty. 
Look at how pretty those are. Gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Ugh. Love it. Okay. Last whip. Last whip. Oh, I'm doing good on time. Yay for me. Okay, so as you know, I am working on... Everybody else is finished with it. <laughs> I'm working on the Summer Schoolhouse series. Brenda Gervais, who's a little genius. Can't wait to see what she has coming out for market. This is part one of the Summer School House Lessons in ABC Darien. This is the largest of all of them. And the house nearly killed me. It's a little wonky. It's a lean-to. It's a shanty. It's a two-floor shanty. So here is my progress. And I'm getting there, people. I'm getting there. I'm very happy with it so far. At the bottom there you see the start of some bird bodies. I've got to do the leaves on that tall climbing vine. I still have to put the letters in. And then there's another vine at the bottom. And that's it. But I really wanted to, because I had zoomed in on this before, I wanted to zoom in because this is one over one on 28 count and I had zoomed in on this with this camera and this is what told me oh yes you should make your videos with this camera look at that not too bad stitching wise huh I love that giant strawberry There it is. One over one. Sorry, I'm a little shaky. So that is all my whips. One, two, one, two, three, four whips. I'm, you know, what's interesting about this piece is that. It's one over one, so it's not easy, but I feel like I'm always going to have a one over one piece going uh, because I love it. And I love how teeny tiny it is. And I have another one over one project waiting in the wings. So I really want to finish this so I can start a different one over one project, even though it's not part two of this. That's the problem with doing a series is that you... And I, and I do want, because I love this series, it's beautiful, but you feel like you have to do all of the series right away, so I don't know. But I'm definitely going to, I'm definitely going to get that finished. Uh, there was a woman at our stitch in, our Sunday stitch in at uh, the Crafty U um, this Sunday. Her name is June, and she is one of the most beautiful stitchers I've ever met. Her stitching is just gorgeous and everything about what she works on is just so. And uh, I just, I love it. And so she brought in a box with all of the Summer Schoolhouse series finished and it was just beautiful and I thought, okay, well I, ha I really, I really want to finish that. So I'm going to finish this large one and then I'm going to take a break from that and I'm going to do a different one over one uh, piece and then I'll come back to the Summer Schoolhouse series. I think that's what I'm going to do. Or I'll alternate uh, between that piece and the other one. So maybe I'll have two one over ones going. Maybe that's a good idea. I'll have two one over ones going and I'll just switch them out. So when I get sick of one one over one, I could switch to the other one. Uh, I'm not really one for a scheduled rotation of things because I don't know what's going to strike my fancy and when it's going to strike my fancy. So 
what I find is I start something and I really enjoy it, I stitch on it until I start to get sick of it. With that summer schoolhouse piece right now, I'm kind of sick of it, but I'm also so close to finishing it and being able to start something else that even though I'm kind of sick of it, I still want to keep going on it because I want it to be done. So I think I'm going to push through and I'm either going to finish that this week or I'm going to work on my, I got to get that Hardanger piece done. I got to get over my fear of cutting, don't I? I do. I do. I know I do. So the next time we do a whip update, hopefully those won't be in the whip pile anymore. They'll be in the finish pile. And that's where we're at with that. And I hope that you um, are all doing well. I want to thank you so much for supporting me while I was in school and always having the right words to say to brighten my day for making such amazing floss tube videos and taking pictures of your work and putting them on Instagram and showing what you're doing on our different Facebook groups. I really love it. And I think you guys are just the best group of people that I could have ever hoped to connect with out on the interwebs. So I feel really grateful for that. And I want to thank you for taking your time to watch my video, which blows me away, uh, because I know your time is precious and I know that you don't have an unlimited amount of it. So it means a lot to me that you would spend time with me. And I look forward to seeing you again. I promise I'll have another video up shortly. Uh, so look for that. And until then, I hope that everything that you touch and stitch is something that brings you joy and that what's in your heart shows through in your stitches.